five grand a month. You might seem like a lot. But you make that now from just selling a deal. And how many deals do you sell a week? Last week, we did 18 grand in deals. 18,000! There's been times where I've spent my last 100 pounds just coming down to the meal. You say it's going to be 40 and then it's actually 30. They're going to be like, well, that was my finder's fee paid for. Now they're going to be your biggest fan. Now they're going to rave about you. Now they're going to pass you referrals. Bought my first property. I spent my last 10 grand just on the deposit and I had nothing. In the end, I made 40 grand profit from it. The best way to make good friends with agents is to buy from them. I spend probably six hours a week on the phone to new academy members just asking for advice on how to do things. How easy do you think it is for the average person, brand spanking new, to be able to just go into deal selling and sell a deal a month? Nathan, good to see you, bro. Congratulations on going full-time in property, bro. Thank you. Thank what you. have been your main strategies and what what do we want to talk about today? What, should, what value should we give so, folks today? So I started out in property uh, before I joined the academy. I'd, I'd flipped a house. I lived in it at the same time. Nice. I made about 40 grand profit doing Respect. that. Respect. Boom. Thank you. 40 grand from one flip. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then joined the academy, got a rent to rent with a JV partner then took another one on. Um, and now I've got three with uh, different JV partners. Good. Up and down. Uh, Are you full-time now in property? Yes. Yeah. What did you do before? I was a lorry driver. By How was that? I didn't, didn't really like it too much. You're not treated very nicely in the industry, to okay. be honest. You, you're treated like crap. Well, by the other drivers? No, by uh, by management. Okay. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. So Were you paid well, though? Yeah, I was paid well. I was self-employed, so I had my own limited company, and I was I was doing, like, contractor work for, yeah. for co-op and, and other places like that. I don't yeah, understand so. why people do a job that they don't enjoy. It paid well. It paid well. How I much was, were you paid? I was earning roughly between 800 to 1200 a week, but okay. I was working very long hours for that. But even that though, it might seem like a lot, like a grand yeah, a week, yeah. four, four grand, five grand a month. Mm. But you make that now from just selling a deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how many deals do you sell a week? I mean, a month? A month. Well, last week we, we did 18 grand in deal selling. <sighs> just last week. 18,000? Yeah, yeah. Damn. So... That's incredible. How does it feel to be making that kind of money in a week? It's life changing, and it's 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 little things like uh, I've I've not spent a lot of money really. I've brought my missus a Range Rover, so she likes that, and oh, uh, she got a wardrobe coming, a triple wardrobe, a big fancy wardrobe. Oh, so she's happy. Married? We're not we're not actually married yet. I call her my wife, but we're not because married. she's wifey material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will marry her. I will, yes. mate. Yeah. And what what's the name of your company? Bet Estates Limited. Yeah. What does that mean? It's my kids' names, so Brooklyn, Elsie, and Teddy. Wow. Well, I want to really have a valuable interview right now. I want to delve into what you've done, learn the skills, and just pass as much as we can for people. Because my listeners, my subscribers, uh, you were one of my subscribers at one point. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully you Still didn't. Am. Still yeah, am. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Like, they're good people. Mm. So deal selling. I mean, I know you got rent to rent. I know you've done your house flip. I made 40 grand on that. But deal selling is the thing that you probably make most of your money from. Yeah, right now, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how do you sell a deal? How do you even begin to start? How does it work? What's the business look like? So starting off, when it, when you're first starting off, the key is just to network with everybody, get as many contacts as you can and stuff like that. And, yeah. and reputation is a big thing as well. Yeah. Being known as a nice guy. I spend probably six hours a week on, on the phone to new academy members just asking for advice on how to do things. So I'll, I'll break it down for them and I'll say, just just make sure you're showing up to everything, the Monday night masterminds, the academy meals. For a long time, I, I wasn't showing up and it's only since I've started showing up and coming to the, the dinners and going to the masterminds and stuff like that, that it's, yeah. it's really started to take off and posting myself a lot more on social media. As yeah, well. that's good, man. Just getting yourself out there, yeah. helping people, creating good karma. Mm. And I've, I, I can t testify that that's something that you do do, yeah. especially within the within the academy. And also when you're dealing with other academy members, you're talking to people that have, they're not leeches. I had one guy message me yesterday and he said, Samuel, can you move to my house for a week and do a financial freedom challenge with me? I said, have you been to a crash course? He said, oh no, it's a bit too far. Mm. I'm like, bruh. Mm. There's if, been times where I've spent my last hundred pounds just coming down to the meal. Yeah, I've I, I've put it in fuel and just come down. Yeah, for, to the Respect. meal to network and stuff. Respect. And that's my last hundred pounds. What about the academy? Like when you joined, was that a massive sacrifice joining the academy? It was. Yeah, it was. How I, did you How did you get them? Was it savings loan? It's from the house sale. Okay, so from, you flipped the house, yeah, made forty yeah. grand, and put yeah, yeah. put twelve of it into the academy. Yeah, yeah. But you know, people that are saying to me, "Can you come and spend a week at my house?" Mm. But they won't travel an hour and a half yeah, yeah. to come to a one pound program. Well, I'm going to be there for a full day, 
pouring my heart out teach for a full day and you're like, oh, I can't bother to come to that, but can you come to me? Yeah. The disrespect, man. It's mm. just nuts, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, so that's the first thing. So getting yourself networked, getting yourself in the right community, giving value, yep. building your reputation within a community. Mm -hmm. Then what? Then it's a case of finding good deals. Yeah. Because there's a lot of deal sellers out there that will, will try and sell things that are, if it's a rent to rent, for example, they're saying it's breaking even at 60%. I've turned people away when they've, they've asked me to co source, and I'm like, it's not a good deal. You need to work on your numbers a bit more and, and make sure your numbers are correct. Yeah. And it's the aftercare as well. For example, we had one where we'd, we'd signed the contracts with the agents, and then the agents had fell out with the, uh, the landlord or, or what, whatever happened and the landlord had decided to rent it to somebody else. But my investor had already spent 2,300 on, mm. on maintaining the place and getting it nice, ready for guests coming in. Nightmare. Yeah. So. what Do you do bespoke selling as well? Uh, not at the minute, no. Okay. No. So if I came to you and said, I want a BRR in Derby. I'd find it for you. Yeah. You'd find it. Mm -hmm. Can you basically find anything? In Derby, yeah, especially. Uh, but with, with BRRs, I know the market very well. Yeah. I, I've got a lot of contacts with agents in that area. So, and, and the best thing about Derby is there's no article for right now. Right. So there's there's a few streets that I've got it in and stuff like that. They're but, trying to get it in. I've, yeah, seen, yeah, the, yeah. I've seen the protesters. Yeah. Why is that a good thing to anyone listening? Why <clears> is it a good thing that there's no article for and... What does that even mean? So it's it's a good thing because you buy property, you'll renovate it, turn it into a, uh, a HMO, and uh, there's no, you, you won't need a license for it unless it's uh, less than how many beds? Was five, five or more beds. Five, five yeah. yeah. So, but the good thing is when Article 4 does come in, it's going to increase the value of the house. Sure. Because that now suddenly everyone else needs planning permission. So, okay, so you will go out and find deals, whether that be BRRs, rent to rents, buy to lets, whatever it is that investors are looking for. Mm. And then how will you then go from finding a deal to then selling it and getting money from an investor? So it's all market research as well. So um, negotiating the purchase price, um, quoting the refurb, you get contacts to my builders, my power team and stuff. If you're buying something in Derby, I'll even offer project management as well. So they'll be able to have a completely hands-off experience um, and, and know that it's just looked after by yeah. me. I'll work out what the GDV is and everything and just present the figures as they are. But sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll overinflate the figures maybe. I'll, I'll say the, the refurb's maybe going to cost 30 grand. Oh, G man, I thought for a minute you meant overinflate the GDV. No. That wouldn't be very smart. No. So when you say over, you mean be super conservative yeah, about so, things like the refurb costs? Yeah, yeah. So. Why do you do that? Why, if the refurb's going to be 40, why would you say it's going to be 50? Under promise and over deliver, I guess. Bang. Yeah. Yeah. And that prevents refunds. Yep. Yep, one hundred percent. Because if you say the refurb is going to be forty and it's actually going to be forty-two, mm. the investor is going to go out and go, "Well, you said forty. Yeah. Now it's 40. Whereas if you do it the other way around, you say it's going to be forty and then it's actually thirty or thirty-five, yeah. they're going to be like, "Well, that was my finder's fee paid for." Now they're going to be your biggest fan. Now they're going to rave about you. Now they're going to pass you referrals. So how many deals are you selling on average, like a month? How much did you sell? How many did you sell last month? <sighs> um, off the top of my head, I don't even know. Do you know what you're turning over roughly with your deal selling business? I mean, last week you said you did 18, 18 grand. grand yeah, obviously that's a very not normal. good week. No, no, that's that was an incredible a good, good week. week. Um, but I'd say average probably anywhere between eight to 12 grand, something like that. Per? Per month. Eight to 12 grand yeah, profit. Yeah, yeah. But last week I was just, I didn't stop. I was constantly. So you're making about double, triple what you were making as a lorry driver. Mm. But last week was particularly awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, why was last week so good? I think... I just hyper focused on deal selling last week, and I put all my time and energy into into just deal selling, just to see how much I could get done. Yeah. So, what's the biggest asset to being a deal seller? Is it about having great deals? Is it about having access to the investors? Is it the skills, the ability to be able to get the sale? Like what just is the biggest strength? I'm a I'm a people person anyway. When I left school, I worked in a chip shop for about six years, so it's customer service based, right? So, I like I like helping people out as well and. Building that reputation, I guess. Being known in the community. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did you justify enrolling onto the academy? And how has that been? So I came to a one pound crash course when I was in the middle of doing my refurb. I didn't sign up for any advanced training then because every penny that I needed kind of had to be spent on the refurb of the house. But uh, I carried on watching YouTube videos. I carried on, uh, I signed up to the 365. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember, it was a minimal amount. I was speaking to Elliot a lot and uh, Elliot went into great detail into what the academy is and stuff like that. So as soon as I had the money, I um, 
I, I rang Elliot and I said, uh, oh, you've got a discovery day on, can I come down to that? And he put me on that and then, uh, and then whilst I was down there, obviously learning a bit more about the academy and stuff like that. And, yeah. And then uh, enrolled a couple of days later, I think. And when was that? Uh, last year, so I'm now on my second year of the oh, academy. Oh, nice, you're yeah, an associate just, member yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how's it been? Was it what you expected? More than. Yeah. More than, yeah. I I told my partner um, when I'd left the barn that um, that I'd enrolled and I hadn't, but I wanted to see what her reaction would be. <laughs> I wanted to see what her reaction would be. Uh, and it wasn't, a, it wasn't a positive one, but it was more like the fact that I'd spent that money and not not spoken to her about it beforehand. But when I got home, she she just, she was encouraging. She, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She just said, if you think you can make this work, then go for it. What does she think about how much money you're bringing in now? Uh, she, she loves it. She's in the fact that I'm home more. Did you say you bought a Range Rover? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, can't really argue with that, can you? No. Of course she's happy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you got your investor list. You got your deals. Cool. How do you sell these deals? To, what are you saying to the investors? To the investors, again, a lot of it now, somebody will message me about it and then they'll, they'll want to pay straight away and I've not even got them on the phone because I think the reputation's there. But I always do try and get them on the phone and say, look, this is the deal. These are the figures. If there's anything that you're not happy with, then you've got the 14-day calling off period in our T's and T's that you're going to sign. Um, and, and just talk through everything with them. And I'll say that there's, there's aftercare there as well. I'm not just going to sell you a deal and then say, see you later. A lot of people, uh, for rent to rents for example, it's going to be their first deal mm. that they're buying and, and they want to know what channel manager to use or or how to systemize things a bit better. Um, so I'll go over that with them as well. And I'll Are speak. you a natural salesman? No. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? Extrovert, probably. Probably an extrovert, yeah. but yeah. not a natural salesperson. No. Um, what, what are the strongest sales skills that you've learned from doing what you're doing that you'd pass on to other people listening? Just be customer service based and care for your customers. Like I said, that deal that my investor went wrong, we, we actually sorted her out with another deal and I discounted her the money that she'd spent on yeah. on the last deal that she'd lost. So I'm losing money, but it's because I care about my customers and I want them to, That's to do good, well. Man. Yeah. Well, that, I'm really glad to hear it because when you know how to sell, because you do know how to sell. People might be watching this thinking, does he know how to sell? Talking a lot about customer being customer based and yeah, caring yeah. about the customer, which is really important. Mm -hmm. That will keep your reputation. But being able to sell is a skill in itself. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, a lot of nice guys who really care about their customers. They really care about their businesses, but they can't sell. And guess what? They're broke. Mm. You have to be able to sell. So give me a role play. So, so I'll be I'll be an investor. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's say you've got a BRR in Derby mm -hmm. and I'm an investor. Nathan, it looks really good. Just give me a few days to think about it. Well, what is stopping you right now? What what do you need to the thing that's holding about? me back is just I just want to process everything. It's a big decision, Nathan, you know? It is. You're it buying is. a house, it's one of the biggest things you ever do. And you've just bought it to me five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes sense, but I, I just feel like I just need to sleep on it, process it for a few days. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course you need to do it. And it's a BRI, it's a big project, right? So you're going to need to take time to process it and stuff. But this is what you have your 14-day calling off period for because you need to do all your due diligence. I'm going to be here to hold your hand a whole process anyway. You're going to get access to my power team, builders, whatever. If you want me to project manage it, I'll project manage it for you as well. Is there anything else that's, that's bothering you? Um... It's not really that's bothering me. Um, so I've got a 14 day calling period. Yep. So if, if in those 14 days I go out and I look at it and I'm not really too sure and, and I want a refund, mm -hmm. I can get a refund within the 14 days from the finder's fee. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. And what's your finder's fee? It's 3000 pound. All right. Well, would it be, I mean, I just feel like I at least need to speak to my wife, mm -hmm. you know, and just see how she feels about the situation. Yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. What do you think she'd say? My wife, what do you think she'll say? Mm. I think if, I guess if we've got a calling off period of fourteen days, and you know, I think I think she'll probably be up for it, really. Okay. So what we'd do right now then is is take the payment, um, and then and then you've got these fourteen days to go and speak to your wife, go and do all your due diligence, um, and and then come back to me and let me know what you think. Okay. How would you like to pay? I mean, maybe bank. I could do maybe a bank transfer. Yeah, bank transfer is fine. Do you want to do that now while we're on the phone? Yeah. All right. No worries. Okay. What's your details? There we go. Nathan knows how to sell. Boom. So what happened? It's just dealing with objections. And this is all the stuff that you learn on the academy anyway, how to deal with yeah. various different objections. Because the thing is, you're going to get that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I get it as well from an investor's point of view. I get why they, they, they probably don't know me um, or, or they've never heard of me before. And I'm, I'm asking them for £3,000. It's a lot of money to some mm -hmm. people. So, But this is the great thing, right? Because 
you've been conservative with the numbers. Now they've paid 3,000, now they're gonna be thinking, no one's gonna pay 3,000 for a laugh. Yeah, yeah. If they've paid 3,000 pounds upfront, they're serious about the deal, but they may ask for a refund if the deal is not everything that you promised. If it's everything and more, why are they gonna ask for a refund? 100%, 100%. They're very unlikely to. Yeah. So that's a good bit of sales there. Mm. Why, did you, wh wh why did you say to me, um, when I said about, I need to speak to my wife, and you said, what do you think your wife will say? Why did you say that? Because they know they're just trying to stall. So, so they know why, uh, what, what the wife's going to say. They just want a bit more time to think about it. But that's again, that's what the 14 day calling off period is. And for. also, let's be real mm. the property game is fast. Yeah. It's fast. Yeah. So if a deal comes along, you can't be saying, oh, all right, you have a few days and you, it, it's not going to be around in a few days. If you've put an offer on a property and the offer's been accepted, the agent wants your photo ID. Sister's details, yeah. mortgage and principal, proof of funds, correspondence address, and yeah. they want it now. And before we even get into the nitty gritty, I ask these sort of questions, these qualifying questions. Right, anyway. talk to me about that then. Let's role play again, but let's assume that this is the beginning of the call. So you just sent me out an email mm -hmm. and you just said, I've got this BRR, these are the figures, brilliant deal, it's in Derby. Yep. If you want to reserve it, text me and let's have a conversation. So, I've just seen that email, I've just texted you. Okay. This is that conversation. So the first thing I'd do is obviously ring you up. Hello, Samuel speaking. Hi, Samuel. You've dropped to me a message about a BRR uh, I did. that you're interested I did. in. Mm. Mm. I was interested in it, actually. Yeah. Okay. Do you mind if I uh, just ask you a few questions and go through it all? Yeah, yeah, absolutely fine. So the first thing, obviously, this this property is uh, £80,000 purchase. Yeah. It's got 25 grand um, refurb that's, that's, that's needed on it. What sort of funds are you working with? Is this something that you can afford? Or? Uh, yeah. Um, I've, got a, I've got a broker. Who's got me a bridging a bridging loan for the refurb okay. and the actual purchase eighty grand? I've got that in savings. Okay, perfect. And what's your experience in BRRs? This will be my first one, but I have got two buy to lets. Okay. Do you need access to a power team? Um, I mean, listen, I, I, I wouldn't mind having, yeah, maybe a, ch a chat with you about if you've got builders and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. So we've got builders that's actually quoted on the refurb on this. So we've got solid quotes in. Nice. Um, we can we can give you access to them if you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what? interested you in this property? Um, it was really just the fact that I'm, I'm tired of saving up money and putting it into a buy to let yeah. and renting it out. I want something where I can buy some it, refurb it, and then I can refinance, pull my money back out and recycle the 80 grand that I've got. Because I think my 80 grand that I've got now, rather than sinking it into a property, I want to put it into a property, pull my money back out and keep doing that again and again and grow my part. And I thought that this property could be potentially suitable for a, for, for a pull your money out. Yeah, 100%. And, and you are going to be able to pull all your money out on this one. Is there anything that you would like to know about this property um, in order to make an informed decision? I think I've got everything. I, I, I just want to see it. I just would go out, have a look at it, you know, see the builder's quotes. Obviously, I need to, you know, speak, speak to my wife, mm -hmm. um, get my advisors to just look at it and, and, and whatnot. But I'm, you know, assuming that I've seen it and it's good, I'm, I'm pretty much ready to go. Okay, so what we're going to do at this stage then is we'll send you over some season and C's that need signing. There's a £3,000 finder's fee for this deal. You have 14-day calling off period. This this is for you to do your own due diligence, make sure you're happy with the deal and everything else. How would you like to pay? Closed, mate. Now I hit you with the objections and you just loop round. Yeah. That's cool. So what you did there was so clever is, is you made me have to qualify myself. Yep. Because most investors will ring you up and they'll say, tell me about the deal. What's this? What's this? What's this? But you said, hey, can I ask you some questions? Yeah. How are you going to be financing it? Yeah, yeah. What was it that caught your eye? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Every time I always qualify an investor. Because if it's a rent-to-rent -rent deal, for example, maybe it's only £10,000 that they need to spend. Yeah. But it, it, they, they might only more. have eight. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Or they might not pass the preference in. Yeah, yeah. Or they might think that they're buying a passive income stream and not understand that they're buying a business opportunity. Because yeah, yeah. we've sold deals with referencing, sometimes they need 85 grand plus yeah, salary yeah, yeah. and stuff like so that. You have to so. qualify them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing that will stop the refund happening. Mm -hmm. So do you love deal selling? I do, yeah, I do. It's very active. You're very yeah. good at it, bro. You think? Yeah, mate, 18 grand last week. You're yeah. very good at it. Yeah, yeah. You're a good salesperson, but the good thing about you is you're so customer focused. It's a responsibility. And also having the skills, I'm not being funny, but I am a genius salesperson, right? And I've trained you how to sell. Sure. So it doesn't surprise me that you're good. But having the skills to be able to sell is a power. It's a superpower. Mm -hmm. And a superpower comes with responsibility. And that mm -hmm. responsibility is looking after your customers. You got right. you, And you know firsthand how we treat our students. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we do kick their asses sometimes. And I've kicked your ass a few times. Yeah, yeah. Especially the ACP people. Talk, talk to me about that. 
So I think I got the grilling the most. Out of everybody? Uh, out of everybody. The, you uh, got your the, ass kicked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? I think you just said I was giving too much away, not not taking too much for myself really and, and, and probably be a bit too much of a nice guy. And that's right, you were. You were, you were doing a lot of code deal sourcing mm -hmm. and you were, you were partnering with people and you were doing percentage splits and all kinds of stuff and yeah, yeah. joint ventures and you were just giving away too much. Mm. I was saying, hang on a minute, you're on the academy, you've got the investor list, you've got the ability to sell, you're fine. What are you doing giving people such high percentages? Yeah. Has that helped a little bit since? It has, yeah. And like I said, since the ACPP, I don't, I, I've never done an 18 grand week. But since the ACPP, it's just like, it's a it springboarded me mm -hmm. onto thing. Yeah, and I'm doing a lot of uh, management now. So if, if I'm selling rent to rent deals and they want completely hands off, we're doing yeah. management for them as well. So It's nice when Academy members get to come for two days at my house and just receive intimate coaching. And I was learning things off other people on yeah. their struggles as well. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. How easy do you think it is for, for the average person, brand spanking new, mm -hmm. nothing, to be able to just go into deal selling and sell a deal a month? It's not that hard, really. It's not, is it? It's not. It's not. If you put the time and the effort in, like I said, just make make sure you come into to all the events and, and showing up. And also a deal a week, the average deal might be three or four grand. Yeah. That's who pays the average salary. So now people say to me, I don't like my job. I say, how much are you earning? If I say I don't know my job and I'm earning 25 grand a week, then I think, okay. But yeah. if I say I don't know my job and I'm earning 25 grand a year, mm. I'm like, well, is you, what are you doing? Yeah. Just leave, do deal selling. How did you find the crash course? It was good. I spent the whole day. I think I was the last to leave. And I yeah. took some numbers from there as well. And I still, still speak to one person that I met there. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. How's life changed then in the last year or two since you've become full-time in property? I've got a lot more time at home with the kids and, yeah. and the missus, yeah, and the wife-to-be. Is that one of the most important reasons for you? It is, yeah. Men in my family have not really done very well. Uh, my granddad passed away at 51 and on New Year's Eve on my bathroom floor. Yes. My dad passed away a couple of years ago. He was only 45. So for me, I've always had that subconscious thing in my head that maybe I'm going to die young. You're going to live long. <laughs> yeah. You're going to live long, bro. But I want to leave something behind for the kids. Yeah, and like you see, I, I'm, I'm from a council estate. I, I, my mum did her best growing up. She, she always gave us everything that she could, but it, it was rough. It's not a nice place. I don't want that for my kids. I want them to not have the struggles that I had necessarily, but also not yeah. be spoiled at the same time. What was the biggest drive then for you getting into property in the first place? What was the real thing that was making you think, I have to do this? I've always liked property. Even when I was younger, I used to watch Homes Under the Hammer with my mum and stuff like that. So I'd always liked the idea of doing property. So when I brought my first property, I, I spent my last 10 grand just on the deposit and I had nothing to do mm. the refurb with. And I just Good worked- for you. Yeah, I just worked like a dog for two years. It took me two years to do, but in the end, I made 40 grand profit from it. So it was definitely worth it. And then it springboarded me onto joining the academy and then yeah. and then going on from there. What's been the hardest aspect of transitioning from a lorry driver to a property tycoon? I don't think there is a, a, a real challenge from, from doing it. It's just it. been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously hard work at times. Yeah, yeah. And I know you've deal had some hardships. De Deals are very active. And, it is. And you, and, you have, and you have things falling through and yeah, yeah. you've got to keep everybody happy. You can't, What you can't do as a deal seller is you can't put your head under the sand mm. and just say, oh, la, 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 la. If there's issues... If there's estate agents that are not happy or if there's deals that are falling through or if investors, you've got to be sure. a man, pick up the phone and deal with it. Sure. And that's hard. And that's what I was saying when, when my investor had spent 2,300 on, on that property that, and the deal had fell through for, mm. for whatever reason between the landlord and the agent. For, for two days, I was in my own head. I messaged you as well and I was yeah. like, man, I feel... I'm born. But I, I remember I, what I said. Do you remember what I said to you? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. You said the fact that... Um, I'm bummed out and I care about my customers and stuff like that is a good thing. Yeah. Um, it shows me that you care and uh, things things will work out in the end. And I also said at one, one time to you, don't worry about what's in your head, worry about what's in your bank. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes it can, you can be, oh man, my head's all over the place or it's stressful or, you know, it's like, don't worry about what's in your head, worry about what's in your bank. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how you keep track of the score. Yeah. yeah. If your bank's big, 100%. I think uh, for a long time, I wasn't coming to the meals and stuff like that. And I got a bollocking off Kieran Connolly as well. Yeah. On the academy. And, uh, yeah, because you've got you to get around the people. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm buying a house now and I've got, um, I'm using Bridging and then I've got an investor that's giving me 30,000 for for the extras as no. well. So, How much are you putting in yourself? Probably about 10 to 15 for the refurb. Beautiful. But, yeah. So yeah. you're basically putting in no money. Yeah. How which, much are you buying the house for? Uh, 85. Refurb? 15. End value? 140, 150. How did you find it from an agent? 
For an agent, yeah, I brought from these previously. I brought from That's these the previously. thing, man. The best way to make good friends with agents is mm. to buy from them. Mm. And it's about negotiating the price as well. So originally it was on the market for 130 and then the deal had fell through. got it down to 85 Yeah, yeah. Ooh. They put it down to 110 because it, the, the buyer had pulled out for whatever reason. I think it was unmortgageable and they couldn't get a mortgage right. When I listed my offer, I put in 83427 like a really specific number. Yeah, so it looked like man. I'd done my sums. And they came back to me and says, uh, we really need about 87. And I said, nah, 87 is not good for me. I'll meet you in the middle and we'll just call it 85 if you want. And they accept it. That's a banger. Yeah. I need to come and see that house. Yeah. When are you completing? Hopefully soon, very soon. Are you about to exchange contracts? Not yet. I need to bring my solicitor today, chase them up. Are you happier now, would you say? Now you're in property? Definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think it's little things as well. Like when, when we were staging the property in London, um, I took the, the kids were off school, school holidays. So I took the missus and the kids down That's and nice. we stopped in a nice house. And we went to Pizza Hut in the evening. And I was just like, yeah, order whatever you want. And it was like, for the first time, I just sat and realised I'm not worrying about yeah. what I've got in my bank. Yeah. It's just, it's nice to just relax and just, Mate, it's deserved, bro. Well done, man. You yeah. know what? It's been a real pleasure. You're a proper nice guy. Thank you. Deserve the success. Thank and you. I appreciate that you help out the new Academy members. Yeah, yeah. Spend time I love with doing them. it. I love doing it. Yeah, and no, I appreciate that. What would you say is your final words of advice to people listening to this right now that want to get into deal sourcing and emulate what you've done? Showing up is, is a massive thing. There's an old saying, how big would you dream if you knew you couldn't fail? Mm. And is it is it going to be one day or is it going to be today? So just showing up, coming to the one pound course, finding out what it's all about. And then I love that, man. Show up. You heard it here first. If you want to get started in property, I'd love to spend a full day with you at the Property Investors Crash Course. Everything I know about property condensed into one day's training. I'm going to be in Birmingham, London, Manchester, up and down the country. If you want to get your tickets, they're just one pound and I'll leave a link in the description. See you there. God bless.